Hey guys, what is up and I welcome each and every one of you to a new League of Legends video. So it's that time once again to take a look at the best champions for patch 7.17. The ones you should watch out for, the ones you should probably ban whether because they're OP or because they're just so darn bad that you don't want anyone on your team picking them. So if you guys end up enjoying this video, then definitely hit it with that like button. And as usual, this video will be made in collaboration with Pro Guides, a very familiar name. It is a website that tries to improve your overall gameplay and knowledge of League of Legends. I have a free trial for them down below in the description. The link will take you directly to their website. Highly recommend checking them out. But without much further ado, let's get right into the best champions of the current patch. The Tempest is at your command. So let's start things off by talking about Janna. Now Janna ended up getting a nerf this patch on top of also being indirectly nerfed because Art and Sensor did receive some nerfs overall as well. But it seems like Riot did a very poor job of that because not only is Janna still the highest win rate of supports by still a decent amount, but Art and Sensor supports in general are still probably the best because even though Art and Sensor overall got nerfed, it actually got buffed at the earlier and even around the mid part of the game. It's only weaker as you get into the late game. So all of that and on top of the Janna nerf just simply being too light, it seems like Janna is still by far one of the best champions in the game and by far the best supports in the game as well. But even with all that being said, Art and Sensor abusing supports are still the best, so champions like Janna, Soraka, Lulu, and even champions like Taric champions like Bard. Anyone that has some sort of heal or buff like Janna Shield are without question the best and those are the ones that you want to play and probably want to ban, again, especially Janna. But with that being said and done, let's take a quick look at the build that you want to run whenever playing Janna support. So Windspeaker's Blessing is going to be your keystone of choice for quite obvious reasons. Your items are going to be quite simple, going for the Ardent Sensor as soon as possible into your boots of choice, usually mobility boots or even CDR boots or if they have a full AD team, armor boots. And then you want to follow up with things like Redemption. Locket of the Iron Solari, maybe something like a McHale's or Knight's Vow or whatever. But following that, we're gonna stay down on the balling for just a bit longer and talk about two ADCs that are by far the very best at the moment, to where if you don't have one of them on your team, it's gonna be somewhat of an uphill battle. Once a Bandle Gunner, always a Bandle Gunner. Now the first champion to talk about is going to be Tristana, in my opinion probably the best ADC at the very moment because of just how hard she scales, her laning phase being surprisingly pretty good, one of the few ADCs that can actually easily peel herself since she does have her rocket jump, her W, and also her ultimate to even further push them away and kite herself as well. Her Q ability is one of the best abilities an ADC can ask for, literally giving her a ridiculous amount of free attack speed just from activating it. She scales really well also because her passive gives her extra auto attack range, so by level 18 she's outranging a lot of ADCs. But on top of all of that and just being an overall good ADC that scales well and has a lot of attack range, has her own peel and escapes, she's also probably the best ADC when it comes to actually taking down towers, playing the objective, because League of Legends is becoming more and more objective focused than ever before. So getting those towers as fast as possible, rotating top lane, mid lane, getting those towers as well into Dragon, Baron or whatever is so important and Tristana is just so good at it. So with all that being said and I mean Tristana is easily probably the best ADC at the very moment combined with someone like Janna, maybe Lulu or whatever with the Arden Sensor. It's so darn hard to stop them that it's actually kind of obnoxious to face. So let's take a very quick look at the build. Warlord's Bloodlust is going to be your keystone of choice. It gives you everything that you want and everything that you're lacking for about half of the game since you don't get any lifesteal for quite a bit into items such as just Static Ship, Infinity Edge, maybe something like a Rapid Fire Cannon or even a Runan's Hurricane if you really want to. Just building a lot of crits and then following it up with some lifesteal. What doesn't kill you just isn't finished yet. And following Tristana, we have the other equivalent ADC of the bot lane in terms of just how strong he is and just how much carry potential he also has. Twitch. I feel like Twitch has actually been up there for quite a few patches now, usually alongside Draven, but Draven did get nerfed and even though he is still quite a fantastic champion, he's definitely not as strong as he was and he's probably maybe number 3 or number 4, but Twitch, Tristana are arguably about tied for number 1. They both just have immense late game scaling, I mean especially Twitch. In my opinion, Twitch actually probably outscales Tristana and can actually hard carry more than Tristana can at let's say around 40 minutes build. But having said that, Tristana probably has the better objective control again just because of how easily she can take towers with her E ability. But anyways, Twitch, his ultimate with Runan's Hurricane, Infinity Edge, and one more crit item will just absolutely melt the whole 
whole team. Once you get Last Whisper, it'll also melt the tanks. And the fact that he can position himself so perfectly with his Q ability makes it very difficult to play against a very skilled Twitch. All in all, this guy along with Tristana are just two insanely strong hyper carry late game ADCs that are very hard to deal with. You almost feel like you're going to lose the game if you don't even have one of them on your team. And combined with the Arden Sensor supports like Janna, Soraka, Lulu, it's a pretty damn obnoxious thing to face. But let's take a quick look at the build that you want to run whenever playing Twitch. Now it's going to be somewhat similar to Tristana except for this one you're actually going to be running Fervor of Battle instead of Warlord's Bloodlust because of just how well it works with Twitch's ultimate. Following that you're also going to be still running essentially crit items but for Twitch you can actually do sort of one of two options. You can either go straight for the Blade of the Rune King first into crit items like Runan's Hurricane, Infinity Edge, Static Shiv or you can completely skip the Blade of the Rune King and go straight into the crit items instead. So things like Runan's IE followed by Static Shiv. It's more personal preference, but personally I'm starting to think that skipping the Blade of the Rune King is probably a better option. But now that we got all that out of the way, let's jump into the jungle and talk about several champions here as per usual. So the first two champions I'll quickly mention are going to be ones that are very familiar by now because they're just simply the strongest at the very moment. The first of which being Sejuani. Trust nothing but your strength. Now based on win rates and all that good stuff, Sejuani is uh, arguably the best jungler at the very moment. She has a very high win rate, she's extremely successful, she works really well with the current meta being very kind of tanky and bruiserish. Since again, those champions are usually melee champions and her passive works really well with other melee champions, getting those stunts as fast as possible. But she also has a pretty strong clear, she's got pretty good ganking potential, she's got great initiation, she's pretty tanky, she brings some nice CC. Just an all around solid champion providing a lot for the team and fitting the meta very well. So let's quickly jump into the build whenever playing Sejuani jungle. Courage of the Colossus is going to be usually your keystone of choice because it just works super well with her with her initiation. She's got so many different ways to proc it as well. And for your items you're going to be going Cinder Hulk into fairly tanky items because that's just the nature of the champion. You're not meant to deal a lot of damage, you're meant to be as tanky as possible while still dealing a surprisingly impressive amount of damage regardless. But following Sejuani, we have Mr. OK himself, Ramis. Okay. Now this is the guy that currently Panzer Dragon is abusing the hell out of in ranked to climb as fast as he can because of just not only how easy he is, but just how effective and how strong he is. Since at the moment ADCs are very strong and I feel like the meta is shifting to the bot lane a lot more than tanks lately and just abusing the hell out of Tristana, Twitch and Arden Sensor supports, champions like Ramis are very effective because they're meant to counter ADC champions. Ramis with Thornmail and his W turned on is a nightmare for ADCs and his ganking potential is actually really strong. He can roll in there extremely fast with his Q ability, he can actually take down towers decently fast, especially for a tank thanks to his ultimate, and he's got one of the easiest point and click CCs in the entire game of League of Legends, which makes him not only just very effective, but again, quite easy. So he's just a very good answer to the current meta while fitting into it as well. So with all that being said and done, let's take a quick look at the build. Just like Sejuani, Curse of the Colossus is going to be your keystone of choice whenever playing Ramis and you want to go fairly tanky items as well. More or less what you see here is going to be extremely similar to Sejuani so I won't go over it too much. But following that, let's talk about a newer-ish kind of face in the jungle, a champion I feel like is definitely making a comeback very slowly, Rek'Sai. Now the beautiful thing about Rek'Sai is the fact that she can be played in many different ways. I mean, do you want to just go full out damage? You can definitely do that and it'll work and you will do a lot of damage. Do you want to maybe play a tanky Rek'Sai? That's not a problem as well. You'll be very, very hard to kill, extremely obnoxious and even still do a decent amount of damage. She did get buffed a few patches ago to where now she can use her tunnels so much more frequently to where her mobility has increased by quite a bit. But all in all, the main reason I'm putting her into this list is because I'm not only seeing her more often, but the times that I do see her, she's really strong. I mean, she's very hard to face. She feels just like a huge presence on the map. Whenever she's chasing after you, it feels like you can't even almost stop her. And all in all, I mean, Rek'Sai, especially now that her ultimate gives her a chance to legitimately outplay people and dodge abilities, is a pretty damn good champion. So let's take a quick look at the build that you want to run whenever playing this girl. Like I said, you can go several options. For instance, you can go warrior enchantment into tank, you can go warrior enchantment into just damage items, or you can go cinder hulk enchantments into tanky items. It really just depends on the playstyle that you like, what you prefer, and your team composition as well, and on top of just how much you want to rely on your teammates overall. 
Now there are going to be two champions left to talk about, the first of which is going to be Talon once again. Live and die by the blade. This guy is still dominating the win rate charts by quite a margin, being the highest win rate champion in the mid lane while still maintaining a decent play rate, while also being the second highest win rate champion in the top lane. And honestly, it's all for good reason. I mean, this guy not only has wave player for an assassin and pretty damn good wave player as well, being his W, but on top of this, his mobility is next to unmatched. He can easily traverse the map faster than many other champions other than things like maybe a Twisted Fate ultimate or a Talia ultimate or something. And on top of this, since the meta is currently heading towards ADCs being very favored on top of their support, usually being an Arden Sensor support, Talon being able to just jump in there to the backline, instantly jump on the ADC and burst them down very quickly to where it's hard to react, unlike someone like Zed where it does take a bit more time for the mark to actually pop. This makes Talon a very formidable assassin, I mean he can get the job done, kill what is arguably the highest priority target at the moment being the ADC and he can do it better than many other champions at the very moment. So with all that being said and done, let's take a quick look at the build that you want to run whenever playing Talon. For runes you want to run flat AD reds and quince, your yellows and your blues will just be dependent on what you're facing. Your mastery keystone is going to be either Thunderlords or Storm Raider Surge, also depending on the matchup and the team comps and whether or not you can actually run away from the champions. If you can, Thunderlords is pretty good to get the kite going, to get the burst and then instantly get the hell out of there. Or if you can't run away from them because they have so much mobility or stick potential, just go for the Thunder Lords and just go straight for the all in. How about a drink? And last but not least, we have Singe in the top lane, the highest win rate champion of the top lane at the very moment. Building a somewhat AP mixed with tankiness sort of build makes for this champion, especially now with his new passive, a very very good champion, one that's also very very annoying to face. He is also able to get to the backline a lot better than a lot of other champions, just pop that ultimate, run to the backline, flip the enemy ADC into your team, just put him out of position which is really important, especially against someone like Twitch, and they're gonna have very little ways to answer that. So that on top of just having this really annoying proxy singed business as well, very hard to face, somewhat of a unique champion for sure, and also being tanky and dealing a good amount of damage, definitely puts Singed in the top list of champions to watch out for. Now very quickly, two honorable mentions, the first of which being Zed. Again, since the meta is starting to favor ADCs, you need champions that can blow them up. Talon being the best, Zed also being pretty damn good at it, so I feel like Zed is slowly coming back into the meta, especially since he did just recently receive some buffs. But the other honorable mention is going to be Orn, but not for the reason you may think. Orn is actually not all that good, because people just have no idea how to play him, in fact he's got the lowest win rates among several roles. So I'm putting Orn in the honorable mentions list not because he's OP, but because he's the champion I recommend you either watch out for in terms of just banning him out, so that your teammates don't end up picking them because he's the new champion ever everyone wants to play the new champion. Ban that guy out, don't let someone on your team pick them because they just want to play the new champion in ranked because you will most likely lose. But either way guys, that is about it for this video. There you have it, the must pick or ban champions for the current patch, patch 7.17. If you did enjoy the video, definitely hit it with that like button, subscribe if you haven't, check out my other videos as well, and I'll see you for the next one. Thank you for watching, peace.